All right. Thank you all again for joining us today for the International Association of Woodcarvers. Today is October the 24th. Uh, it is 3 p.m. And uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Russell Scott. Mr. Russell Scott's joining us uh, to do a demonstration on Santa carvings. Uh, Russell started carving back in 1999. Uh, he specializes in human figures. Um, he has a book called Carving Undercover Santas. And uh, he's done several articles on Wood Carving Illustrated and Chip Chats, and also uh, written several how-to books. Uh, so here in just a few minutes, we'll join Russell and he'll be doing the demonstration for us. I just want to remind everybody that there's some ongoing classes out there that you can participate in if you're uh, looking for a class to join. Uh, again, while we're quarantined and uh, under somewhat uh, restrictions as far as meeting with clubs and classes and things like that. Uh, Dave Stetson has a class com coming up uh, that he's holding between Thanksgiving and Christmas on carving male bus uh, figures. Uh, Kevin Applegate has a Santa bottle stopper class that's coming up in November. Uh, again, Chris Hammock's going to be doing uh, ongoing design and carved caricature classes. Uh, Chris will actually be on with us next week, so I look forward to hearing from Chris to talk about that. And then Al Lacoste that we had on a few weeks ago is uh, doing online classes and he also has a subscription um, service that he offers for carvers. So make sure you check out those. Um, we'll talk about the um, people that's gonna be presenting to us at the end of the meeting today. Um, having said that, we'll go ahead and get on with uh, Russell Scott and turn it over to him so he can start his demonstration. Russell, we appreciate you joining us and uh, look forward to what you have to uh, show us today. Thanks Russell. Thanks a lot, Blake. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, you can. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Blake. I mean, my name is Russell Scott, and like you said, I've been carving uh, since 1999. That's 21 years, so my oldest carvings are old enough to drink. And uh, uh, I've been taking took uh, take many classes from after that. I've been uh, carving 21 years solid. Uh, uninterrupted. And after a while, I thought, well, um, I thought I'd uh, begin to teach. And the best place to start is, is to teach um, beginning work carving because uh, it's be a little intimidating to teach uh, <clears throat> people who can carve intermediate and, and professional. And I thought that, well, you know, beginners, I can tell them anything and they'll believe it. So anyways, uh, so, so it was a good uh, way to practice uh, teaching. And I, th I think I did uh, pretty good. And I do most of my teaching um, at Carfest, which is in uh, Fairbolt, is in, in August. And also another is uh, the Metro Wood Carving Weekend, which is in uh, Fridley, Minnesota. Uh, that is in October, and provided that we won't have coronavirus next year. Um, uh, I, like Blake says, I, I, do, uh, I have created my own books and DVDs. And I have sold bark uh, when I had a, a table out in a, a wood carving show. And uh, some of the books that I've created, they're uh, home, uh, we're gonna call it home self-published books. Like for example, here's uh, my uh, vintage Santa Claus. And as a matter of fact, I will, one in the back is what I'll do. I do other carving uh, books, like uh, one is like 15, uh, carvings from one rough uh, cut out. So you cut out something like this. And then you, and I got like Santa Clauses and I got angels and Abraham Lincoln and Vikings and, and nativities and everything just by cut, making one cut out. And another book is uh, uh, small uh, carvings. One of them is an, a little angel and also had some uh, Vic, uh, had some, uh, um, Pilgrims and it's a con combined of two. So you got wings on everything. So there's uh, uh, a wing on the Mrs. Uh, Pilgrim. Uh, then I got into uh, YouTube videos. Um, I've got many out there. Uh, the most latest, latest is uh, I call the COVID because uh, it's uh, I've done in them outside just to get outside. I mean, one is like a, the little, little drummer boy here and uh, Another is the COVID angel, all waiting for you to carve. And uh, one of my favorite, if it doesn't fall apart in pieces is my uncle Sam, looking at the flag bus there, just on my YouTube. Uh, 
then um, I got into uh, doing um, cotton, uh, doing rough outs. And um, some of the rough outs, uh, not only Santa Clauses, I got a lot of non Santas. I mean, one would be like, a, got this nice little Viking here, big Viking here, another little. That's the like the biggest one, and I got like Civil War soldier and World War II soldier, and then all other kind of Santa Clauses, and then down to this little one here. Uh, the reason, another reason why I had had it little is it's mostly, you know, for the face. I mean, there's nothing to it, so it's a good uh, uh, Santa face practice kind of rope out. And with that, uh, I think it's it should just move forward. And like I said. I carved, I were gonna carve a, from one of my books, from the book I just had. He's, he looks a little bit like this. I'll put the camera on and we'll get a little better shot on that, the big camera. I did a little practice beforehand to make sure this is, is gonna be more like this size. So it's gonna be a uh, um, old world Santa, you know, the ho, ho, ho Santa, but. What we're going to try to do is at least get to the point where it doesn't get too white, is that hopefully we can get to the face. I'll go as far as I can today. And most of it is, once we get most all of it in, you probably could finish it. But uh, let me uh, set up here. I am going to set up my uh, big camera. We're still good. Oh, share. All right, you see my hand? Glasses. Yep, that's good. All right, let's get this all in here. Fire and hole. Move that back. Okay, like I said, I'll give another better close up. Lights. Get the focus. There we go. Now this uh, this Santa is just a, a little practice. Was a little practice Santa, and uh, old world Santa. And can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? Three, two, one. <laughs> the problem is, is that uh, Noel, the little two dots, is supposed to be over the E, not the O. Whoops, the daisy. So, um, like I said, this is what we're going to try to do from a block of wood. Get over there, something like this. We got a little bit of manual focus there. Focusing in. Hopefully, we'll get as much as we can. The first thing I like to do, I'm going to put the gloves on, and of course, is. Oh, by the way, this is a this particular one. I'll have the pattern out out to you later. Uh, to the uh, international uh, Facebook site is uh, seven and a half or seven inches by two and a half by two and a half. So I go down the center line there. Let's move the camera even closer. How close can we get it? Without destroying things here. Okay. What I like to do when I start off is I like to kind of get go around and cut um, the corners just a little bit uh, so that it'd be a little easier to handle. I don't know if you, if you guys ever done that, but it, it uh, gets uh, get tiresome of just a little bit of handling those sharp edges while trying to get, especially when you're trying to move a lot of wood. Closer in there, maybe if I just widen it just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit, a little bit. Okay, now the first thing I want to do, like I said, I was hoping to get at least it to the face, and we'll probably work on the rest later if we got if we got time. Is I want to circle in where the no, whoops, sorry, that's not the first thing. That's the next thing. What I want to do. It's a good thing I caught that, is I want to take and cut about 10 degrees before I put the circle in the... It's kind of difficult. 
curving at this angle, but we'll get there. I want to be careful with the mustache is going to come in there. Don't cut too much, but the idea. Let's see if I can do better with my big chisel, not little chisel. about 10 degrees in both directions. So just what we want to do is when we put the um, um, wood in, we still want to be able to have enough so we could get our knife in there and do the face. Kind of interesting that uh, people ask, what kind of tools do you use? Sharp tools. I never paid attention to what's what's what. You know, what kind of knife do you have? Sharp. I mean, I've had a Helvy. I still have my Helvy. And uh, but the thing is, is that uh, I got this knife, and I don't know what exactly it is. It's, uh, I grabbed a hold of it. It felt uh, like it, it 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 works, and I did uh, have. I do have my. Um, um, ruler here if you measure. This is a probably, this chisel is a number five and probably a um, about a 50 millimeter. No, is it, would that be right? Okay, now let's get going here. Now let's put the, wait a bit, I wanna put a little bit of the hood for the hood. And we can always carve back, of course. And I want to leave just a little bit for that shock of hair up here. We can always shape it or do something else with it later. And I like to get the, the first stop cut with, with the V-tool. Get that going. that here on top. Oh. That would have been the right way. Okay. I want to take now my knife and now make a bigger stop cut. And this is going to go deep because now even that hair now we want to achieve a 90 degree angle to that center. Probably the most, most heavy, heavy curving in this project of them rounding out the back. Sometimes I do do that, try to take things out all in one piece. And I don't have to, I don't want to worry about the fact that it's kind of really punky right here. We'll get, I'll get to cleaning that up later. I just like to move a lot of lumber and then and just watch where that tip of that knife goes. That doesn't go into, into the, something you don't want to go into. Not only your fingers, but. Yeah, I've been carving um, mostly Santas. I mean, I, I carve um, human figures. I just start, I, like I was talking with um, James a couple of weeks ago that uh, he's got that book out on animals. I think I might practice on those animals. Get into animals and stuff like that. So this is, I wanna say about a 90 degree angle. And let me know if I get off the screen. If you see some of my videos, sometimes I'll be carving and carving and carving. And where'd it go? Hey, Russ, this is Blake. If you don't get this piece finished on uh, the meeting today, can you finish it up on YouTube on a video later so people can see how it's finished? Okay, yeah. Just uh, I'm just going to keep carving and you tell me stop. Tell me what it is. Okay. 
like I said, if at least if we can get the, everything else is pretty much busy work is what I call it. You know, but I mean, I think for sure we can get the at least the eye socket and the nose and the beard and the mustache in at least that. Okay, then I'd like to you know, let's get this started. Now I've I've learned how to carve really fast because when I took classes way in the beginning, so I learned how to very in the very beginning is that uh, the time would be going along and and uh, we're getting to the point where it's getting close time to go home. Well, wait a minute, we haven't done the face or something I want to carve, and so I got to a point of just carving away and if it breaks or whatever, I'll have to figure it out later, but I wanna to get to a certain part. And after that, it's just gonna get used to just keep, as long as I still think about staying safe. Okay, hey, Russell, it's Tom here. Are you able to zoom out on your camera a bit so we can see the curve a bit more? Well, you zoom out or zoom in? Just out a bit so we can see a bit more of your carving. Oh, okay. Here, okay, make sure I take the right button then. Like this? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay, I thought it'd be the other way around. You want it more closer. Okay. <laughs> when we get to the, if we have time to do the eyeballs, I mean, we're really going to have to get up there. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, another cut here. Now, the difference between this one and the last one I, I just showed you is um, uh, his hood kind of comes down too fast. And so I want the hood to come wider out and I'm going to try to hopefully experiment a little bit more about with that. Okay, I keep that if you want, you can probably keep that right there. So one of the things that I did, uh, um, actually this is my wife's Lynn's idea in January to carve, try to make 10 Santas a month. And uh, it was gonna hair only thing, especially right after the Christmas holiday in January. I don't want anything, don't wanna carve any more Santas, but we managed to keep it up. I got the pictures on my uh, Facebook page. Got a carving. Facebook page. Okay, now I'm trying to think about this. I want to take just, just a half second of rounding this just a little bit so I can get a feel for what's going on before I get into the face because we're ready to get into the face here. Uh, moving back here. Come in just a little bit. There we go. I just want to get a feel. And then before I get into the face, I think it's going to help a little bit is because right here, right here is the shoulder. And so I want the hood to kind of go a little bit like this. I'll do that now. It'll kind of help a little bit when we do the face. Let's carve that out. It's really interesting. Uh, one of the um, habits that I did, I noticed that James Miller did it too, is when he carve, when I carve, is you know, when you do the push like this, you know what you're supposed to do is you put your, you're supposed to put your finger, your thumb on and push. Well, I push, put my finger on it, my thumb on my thumb. And it gives you, it's more wider when you do that. However, the thumb that is getting pressed don't like it after a while. So good, I'm glad I got this, kind of got it started so I can start in on the face. Am I getting too far off the camera? I think I need to turn and pull a little more. 
a little better. Okay. Um, like I said, it's a little punky right now, a little hacky wacky with the knife. Right now, I'll clean that, clean it up a little later. Now, what I'd like to do uh, when I put the eyes and nose in is I do it kind of a more rudimentic, rudimentary way of doing it. Here's my little stuff. I'm going to kind of show you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it. Is we're at a 90 degree angle, the face. And uh, what we do is, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, these triangles that look like sort of a jack-o'-lantern kind of a thing. I'm going to cut under the nose, and then chip. I chip carve these out. One and then two. And the reason why I like doing it this way, then later on, I then the second I'll come with the chisel, and make it smoother. Is I like taking. Um, the the wood out with the knife and then the chisel I just kind of smooth it out uh, but there are people who can take a chisel and just and there it is now the I'm going to line it up a little bit like this I would be about here the eye is supposed to be of course obviously halfway between the top and the chin right at the noggin and the chin you can kind of have to kind of figure how that's going to be. Right here. And the nose. Now the nose is supposed to be uh, about one third down from the eye to the chin, but I always do it a half halfway because being a character, he can have a, a larger nose. And of course, uh, if a larger nose is better, just in case if you get a little too uh, whack hacky with the nose there and you start cutting off more than you should. You want to have more lumber there. So like I said, I'm going to cut, do a quick stop cut to get that nose out of there. Bring the nose up. Just down just a little bit. So it's about a 30 degree angle back ish, give or take. I think I need a little more than that. And there's where I'm starting to get into the into the hood. But I did get rid of some of that hood. A little bit better. I think we'll have to come back to that a little more. Okay. Center line back in. I back in. And then I, what I do is just put that little jack o' lantern nose in and a jack o' lantern eye in. It kind of comes up sharp and then kind of flattens. Sharp and then flattens. And like I said, I do a chip, like chip carving. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm right handed, and I guess left handed is the same in reverse is that I want to cut away from the nose, but towards the eye, creating the chips. And the way I do this is I do two, two at the same time, two chips at the same time, by going, like I said, away from the nose, closer here, away from the nose towards the eyeball, and then come up here, now, this is going to go shallow and it's going to go deep. That's the thing I neglected to say. So it's like away from the eyebrow towards the eye. And then this one here is kind of a medium cut, but it's still away from the eyebrow towards the eye. Same with the other side, I've turned it over because my right hand, I'm naturally kind of like this instead of like this. So I thought, why don't we just carve the way our hand is naturally? Now here I'm going to go shallow and then very deep because right at the eye socket there, that is really deep there, and like away from the nose towards the eyeball. Same thing here, except they'll be deep here, deep here, but then shallow. We don't want to give them a scar up on top of the brow, and then here's just kind of shallow. Now. Now I take the first chip out by starting up here, down, down the eye, 
to the nose, but I go shallow, deep, shallow, and it should, my favorite word, it pop out of there. Doesn't have to be totally perfect, but like I said, I like to get, uh, get a lot of lumber out there first before I chisel it. And with here, shallow, deep, shallow. This is taught to me, yeah, 21 years ago. And I've never, somebody taught me this in one of the classes I took. And I never did it differently because it always worked. Now, here comes the fun part, is we're gonna go and I need a chisel, where's my little flat chisel? I got a number five, hello. A number, small number five. That's probably about 10 millimeter, give or take. And see if it wasn't for the, um, the hood, I could use my knife, but I'm gonna use. And I show this technique on a lot of my YouTube videos. That looks like a little bit of eyelash there. Got too much eyelash. Chop that out of there. Same with this side. Oops. Get a little more of that cheek. Okay. See, what should have happened is if I didn't have the hood, I could have been able to bring the knife up and back down. I'll clean it just a little bit before I put the chisel to it. You could you probably use a knife and clean it up as is, but I still like to bring a chisel in there. What you got? What's your piggy? Your piggy? What's that? Piggy. Who's that? Oh, okay. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Two things is that uh, we still see this little eye line here on the bridge of the nose. So I want to cut a little bit like this and like that. And then I'll give you that. Eat the wood. That, uh, Let's test your mom. That nose there. And then I want to take about, I call that a, a right triangle. Just take a little nip out of the nose the nostril there. So when we take the chisel to it, it'll come out a lot, a lot easier. I just like the light, the knife more than the chisel, but it does take quite a bit out with the, with the knife. So we got to kind of start it, even though it looks kind of punky right now. So now I'm going to take my number nine. Got a T-handle there, I don't want to pull any cords. So that would be about a six, six millimeter, seven millimeter, number nine-ish. And here comes the fun part. Is I'm gonna take the chisel at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna kind of skin the nose around the nostril, into the nose, up, and then down into the eye socket like that. like that. And I'm going to come back this way, sort of a frown, but it's got to go up and it's got to go down and meet that. And usually that doesn't come out. You don't have to worry about that coming out right away until you do this on the bottom, you do the same thing back. Same thing here. So I'm going to go around the nostril. 45 degree angle down. So you're just, you're just going along, you're just skinning across, across the nose and the cheek. Same thing. Right down like this. And on the nostril, you know, get out of there. I just went upside down just to, just to get a little of the roundness of it. It depends on how, how wide you want the nose. I always aim for a wider nose and then go Put a little nostril hole in there as it were. I needed to clean this up and then just a little more cleaning. 
And then I would take the knife and do just a little bit of shaping and cleaning around the nostril. On the nostril this way. And then get this a little deeper with the tip of the knife. But this goes down. So you're taking a little, little chip out. So yeah, it's getting a little, little happy because I'm trying to do this a little quick here. It's a little, getting a little too quick. This one, another number nine, smaller nine, get that out, clean that out of there. Okay. A little more shaping. Then what I want to do is uh, put the eyeline back in. It's right there. Right there. Put the eyeline back in. And I want to take my knife and just like what I did at the tip of the or the bridge of the nose, do the same thing at the edge here. Around it. And we're going to be putting some hair in there, and I just don't want it to be rounded a little bit. I'm doing a little. Okay, now I'm going to put the um, the mustache. Now he's going to have a big mustache. What I like to do uh, with my other sand is I always do this kind of a, I call it the happy mustache where it goes like this. But this, he's an old world sand and they, I don't know why they always kind of have that brownie look or something, you know, kind of serious look. And the cheek, cheek is in there. And then it's gonna come actually like right here. I get some, we go a little too far on the seat. This is what I really meant to do. Okay, take our V, get in there. And what I wanna do is take the V and have the, the blade up so it doesn't cut into the face. If it cuts into the, Hood, that's okay. I want to get the face as perfect as possible. We're doing a little digging here, which my other stand is I don't have to dig because I don't have a hood. Um, however, the beard, mustache, hair, even the clothing is imperfect. So if you kind of goof up a little bit, and there's going to be quite a bit of uh, cleaning up. I'm not going to spend too much time on the cleaning with this. Okay, same with on this side, blade up from the face. And get that cheek in there. Now the cheek is, uh, you use your, um, V tool just straight up and down with the cheek. So it, it uh, rounds the cheek and rounds the mustache at the same time. There's a little bit of hair. Going on in there. Like I said, sorry about that. I am not gonna spend too much time cleaning this. And there's gonna, what I do is I, I did with this one, is I did manage to get a, um, feed tool in there to do the hair. Like I said, I want to get to the eyes, get to the beard and mustache. Now as for the beard, before I do the mustache, I want to get into the beard. Um, now let's get into the mustache first here because then it'll show us where all the beard is going to be. And that's kind of straight up and down because you still want to round. Here I will have the blade sticking up because I want to get the mustache up. Oh, 
Okay, and then we'll go to the going to get that one a little too deep over here. So I want to take and uh, get my knife in underneath the, the mustache. Maybe cut a little too much over here, but I'll see if I can fix that. Let's get that mustache up. All right. Try to get a, some cleaner cuts now that I'm away from the away from the hood there. That is a real mess. Of, maybe that's some time. Now. You're a little off right. What's that? Oh, I got off again. Okay. <laughs> that happens all the time. It's a good thing somebody's telling me. My videos, I don't have anybody to tell me. Other than when they make their comments, they underneath they tell me. A little bit of mustache here. Okay, I want to work a little bit more in this. Just a bit. And I want to round this just a little bit. The shoulder, or the chest rather. Bring it out of there. Carefully, don't pry. I do that once in a while. I end up with a broken tip. We'll get that. Start with the chest a little bit there. Same with over here. I always have my thumb out when I'm cutting towards myself there. Getting there. Now I want to get that uh, smooth this out a little bit. I'll get the beard in. And I want to get uh, a little more beard than I did. That's I think I, I gave a little more wood than I did this way. I wanted to have a little more beard and more beard coming out. It's going to kind of look a lot like a uh, sort of like a Southern Colonel gentleman kind of Colonel Sanders, I don't know, whatever. I have to fix that a little bit there. Same thing with the V tool is to bring the have the blade up. And uh, stop cut, stop cut. Mm -hmm. Bringing the shoulder back at the same time. And the hood back. I don't know if that's a bad habit of just trying to take too much off one scoop instead of taking chips off. While I'm hacking away at this, has anybody got a, any questions? Or we put too many people to sleep or? 
Hey, Russ, can you talk a little bit about your website and uh, any other places that they might be able to find your work if they want to buy something from you? Okay, um, scottcarvings.com. That's the main uh, main site. You got all the others. I also got uh, uh, a site, and I got my YouTube site. That's youtube.com forward slash scottcarvings, I do believe. I have uh, my uh, Facebook. Now I've been neglectful with that lately, but uh, as of a couple of days ago, I put uh, more pictures and stuff on there. Uh, put uh, all our, from January to September 10, Santa Clauses. And, and I also put on there the fact that uh, today, uh, it came out that the uh, new, this issue, uh, number 93, winter issue of Woodcarver's illustration, illustration is coming. As a matter of fact, it's mailed out. And, a, and I have a, a, a Santa Claus in it and it made the front page, made the cover, pardon me. And I'm pretty thrilled about that. I got that, uh, you can look it up at Woodcarver's Illustrated and I'll have more on it. And I also have a link to that on my, uh, um, well, I'll have it on my web page shortly, but right now I have it on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, I'll link to that. Yep. I have a question about your book. It's beautiful. And I would like to know how you started uh, getting that together and how it came about. Well, it's really interesting how, I, well, I've done those other books before the, the um, self-publishing. Um, so, uh, so I do have the uh, the step-by-step the -step, um, understanding, taking pictures and everything. Uh, but um, it uh, well, it just uh, came about. We just well, let's talk to see if we can find the right person and come up with the idea, okay. and uh, and see if if they would take it. Uh, another gentleman from the that website or that uh, that uh, the book Fox Chapel, pardon me. Uh, asked if we would make a book on uh, on painting, and I thought I don't know if we can. I mean, our, our, we do okay on painting and everything, and we do, in fact we do fairly decent on painting. But I don't know if it's worth the whole book. And then that's why I came back and said, well, we just have this idea of an undercover Santa is because the question is, is how is it that Santa knows who's you know naughty or nice, and he's out there and. Uh, we got that idea from, I, I got that idea from my wife and I too, is uh, like, for example, my uh, father used to play Santa Claus at our Moose Lodge. And um, and uh, one time he told the story, oh, he's, he's a lot of times he has stories of, you know, kids thinking he's Santa Claus because he had the beard and everything. One time he was in line in the supermarket and there's this boy that's just acting up, little eight-year-old, seven-year-old boy was just acting up. And he turned around and saw my dad and his eyeballs went silver dollar size and looked at him and my dad looked down and said, remember, I'm always watching. And he straightened up and the mother thanked him. Oh, thank you. And uh, so that's one of the main reasons. And another story was uh, when I was a kid, uh, uh, I got in the book there uh, when I was uh, in Cub Scouts and very young and um, and uh, into the December meeting, uh, what we would do at the end of the meeting is that we would, uh, the kids would sing, you know, Christmas carols to bring uh, Santa Claus down to the to the gym there. And uh, he, uh, so we would sing and, you know, and he'd say, well, let's sing uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And we'd sing, but you got to sing loud. Otherwise, you know, say, I can't hear you. You got to bring him, you to bring him down. I'm going to round this off a little bit here. And so we would sing and look to his right. No, that isn't enough. And how about uh, jingle bells? And we'd sing until his lungs popped out of our bellies and still no sand. I still remember to this day the, that the sort of the, the feeling of that something was wrong. Santa, we're doing, we're, we're, we're screaming to the top of, well, how about let's sing Santa Claus come to town? And of course, as, as it would be, is that it would, that was the cue song and ho, ho, ho. And Santa Claus came out and, and we'd all get up and get a little white bag of 
candy. Well, anyways, when it come to me, and I went up to her and he says, he says, oh, 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 kind of a teenage voice trying to pretend to be Santa. And, uh, and he said, oh, Merry Christmas, Rusty. And I go, oh my God, that's Santa. I mean, every time you go to a, a department store, Santa, and you put it on, a, and you put your, he puts you on his lap. And, 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 and what's the first thing he says is, what's your name, little boy? Well, wait a minute. You're Santa Claus. You're supposed to know what my name is. So that was the real Santa. And when it transpired, it was my older brother who played Santa. <laughs> but at that time, that was Santa Claus, and nobody can tell me otherwise. I, that was really, and that's one of the main reasons, and there's other stories too, is that just Santa is always watching. And uh, that's what we had a little, uh, so it's sort of like doing, you know, the mailman and the uh, tree salesman, man, all kind of at the same time. Now, the mustache got a little kind of awkward here, so I'm going to have to I'll play with Well, it's all right. I'm going to get to the beard. I'll get back to shaping a little later there. Oops, getting out again. Now, what I want to do after I get the marks off, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get in here, put a little have a little smile in there, and we're going to get our little RV tool. Hey, Russ, could you talk a little bit about your paint process and how you uh, paint your Santas? Oh, painting? Yeah, how you finish your Santas from, you know, when you're finished a carving, how you finish it up. Well, first of all, when I paint, actually, uh, we got a kind of system going here. Lynn does, does the base. Lynn and I took a class uh, with uh, uh, Pat Moore, uh, you know, the Moore Rough Outs. Okay, I gotta clean that up a little bit there. And Pat Moore has a class on painting, and so that's that's where we got our, our ideas or, or how to paint is that you put on a base and then you put the uh, uh, the dark the shading and the uh, and the highlighting in. And um, okay, I'm gonna okay, I got the the mouth, the bottom of the mouth. I'm gonna take a big deep. Oops, sorry, deep chip. Well, anyways, you put the base on, and that's all we've been doing before that. You put the red for Santa and the white for the beard, and call it good. And and now that we've been doing it, that, uh, doing it different ways, like how pukey our stuff looked. So uh, I put in. Lynn puts in the base, and and she taught us how to do the eyes. And I must have been asleep or something when she taught us how to do the eyes, and I. Uh, uh, I, I think I might remember, but Lynn does the eyes. And every time people look at her Santas, they always say, look at those eyes. Well, what about the rest of the carving? You know, I carved it, you know. But anyways, uh, then uh, um, what how Pat does is more of a dry brush. So he knows to take a darker paint and, and bring its shade and the shadows out. Uh, what I've done is more wet brush. Uh, I thought I... I, I that's what she said, and later on I found it is not, but I, so I got it a different way because what I do is uh, after Lynn would paint it a, you know, red, and then when I'm gonna do my shading, you know, like shading in here, is I still have a, a sort of a darker red, almost a black red, and I would still have it, uh, um, uh, you know, like Kool-Aid texture, and I, I go over and put a wash one more time, and you get that red and then that dark, and for some reason just has this little, it has a nice, different texture to the to the color. But anyways, then after that, spray it. And then I uh, I put uh, Watco wax on it. It's uh, uh, three parts neutral or white or natural or whatever it's called. And one part dark. Now, they don't sell dark anymore. So I got only a little bit left. And I think I can use a darker and some other darker, as long as it's an oil. And, uh, and what do I do is I would uh, put it on and just wipe it off. And then I take the brush and make sure it's all even, make sure it doesn't get into the, too much into the cracks. And I want it to look like, um, um, sort of like, like you were just at gra up in grandma's attic and, and she had it brand new and it just had that, just the extra antiqueness. And it didn't, didn't have to look like, you know, um, from the 1600s or anything like that. 
but that's basically how we do it. Okay, I'm going to do the beard kind of quick here. The way I do it is uh, take the knife about, uh, what is that, about 20, can I put this up and bear down at the same time? And you want to try to use the V tool as less as possible when coming to the, to the beard because it's too mechanical, but we're still going to use it. Now the beard, you can either just take your knife and either it was just like that and leave it and call it good. Or sometimes I would take the knife and just do these little scoops, you know, call it good. But uh, now there's, this is somewhere between being a, a, a very um, realistic to kind of a quick, you know, almost whimsy, whimsy kind of thing here. And uh, so I take the grit about, uh, what's that about? 20 degrees one way and 20 degrees back. Then I come in here and I take this out, this out, this out. This out. Okay, so now we're getting there, getting somewhere. Then I take my knife. And just a little scoop. Anybody else has any more questions? This is probably a good time. Yeah, I've been getting into doing uh, other stuff kind of I mean, still do the art of carving. I love the art of carving. We got a little bit into the business aspect of it. Um, just right after. Hello? Yeah, Russell, it's Daniel. I was just wondering, you, you mentioned that you, you sprayed your, uh, when you were doing the painting process, you sprayed it. What did you spray it with? Oh, I'm sorry. I used deft. Uh, before we paint, before we paint, we, we use a uh, deft, so like either a mat or uh, what is it? It's matte or sh or sa satin, and or and then after it's either semi gloss, usually semi gloss. I spray over the paint, and okay. then put, I forgot about that. Sorry about that. And then I do a little bit of undercutting, and bring that with. Another thing that I've gotten into. Well, then I too was we got into writing and writing stories, and uh, it's about uh, wood carving. Wood carvings that come to life, and it's not like what you think. You know, it's not like a kid's book or anything like that. It's um, you know, it's a serious books, a serious stories. It's just the wood carvers are kind of they're just regular people. You know, they they're kind of in the background and help and. Uh, so if you're, uh, some samples of uh, my writing is on, it's called www.santakeepers.com. Uh, uh, I got a couple, some, couple of short stories on there. And uh, okay, so I did quite a bit of undercutting. And like I said, I got I still gonna need to spend more time on the, uh, on the mustache. I'm not too concerned about that right now. I can trim it or shape it some other way. Like I said, it's, it's semi imperfect as it were. And now after I've done this, and I like that undercutting, it just kind of picks that, picks it up a little bit there. Now you can use the chisel and make sure you turn and twist and Oops, oops, that kind of came off there, but that's okay. The beard is imperfect. Got too close to the fire and some of it came off. I'll do the same thing to the uh, mustache, but the thing is, is, like I said, I need to shape it just a little bit more because I want to get, uh, how's the time? Uh, it'll take me about, uh, about 10 minutes to do eyeballs. Are we good enough to do eyeballs for about 10-ish? Yeah, you're in good shape, Russ. We've just been on 55 minutes. So. Okay, that's what I want. I mean, that's the main thing because it, it gets to a point. Once you get to this point, it's really uh, 
a matter of shaping and cleaning and digging out and whatever, but I was hoping to get into the eyeballs at least that, and we can go from there. Let me clean this a little bit. And like I said, I'm sorry that this is a little hacky. Like I said, I, I want to get as much in as in a short period of time because I think cleaning up is a little you know, easier than starting from scratch. There's my small number nine. Anyways, okay, let's clean the eye sockets out. I think I'm gonna have to come a little closer here. I think it might be a little unfocused, but I think this, like I said, we wanna round this right here. And then there. Yeah, there we go. I wanna clean this like this. Okay. I think that helps us if we can get a little uh, horse, horse hair or brush or whatever you call it, your pencil in, make sure we get that line in. Again, forgive the hacky wackiness of it. I'm just. Usually I spend a lot of time cleaning up and how the heck with it. Because what happens is that, uh, put the line back in, is when you carve the ball, you're going to be cleaning up anyways. And it's, Sometimes I have it really hacky, and even though I do the ball and get, I always have the knife in there, and it does kind of clean up a little bit. And over here, I want to get a little bit of this cleaned up here. I got too much the knife in there. So again, a little more shaping here and there. Always come back to it. Pencil. Now that I think you've heard a million times that uh, there are five eye spaces between, um, I kind of eyeball this a little bit here, about here to here. Uh, I don't want to have him, if the eyes are a little farther apart, that's okay. You don't want to be too close together. And right about there, there's supposed to be another eye but we can just say with the hair that the head that actually kind of goes around a little more. And this is something I learned from uh, Floyd Radigan is since I'm right-handed, start with his right eye. I'm going to go so sharp and comes down. And then and when you do that, just kind of goes a little somewhat sharp. And now this is an old world Santa. Now if it was a Santa Claus, I have a more of a happier, you know, have a more, like happier type of eye, you know, there's the cheek and so on, but he's an old world Santa, so I can kind of compare over here what I did. Now, I, at this point, I like to get my little detailing knife out. I think it's an old uh, Murphy, that has been ground down. No, it's a, a woodcraft sort of a Dastra style knife. It's been ground down. And so what I do is I'm going to draw with just a little bit of pressure right out of the pencil line. Can you see that there? Get it down, branch out back out. Same with over here. Oops, I gotta go a little higher. Down, now this can go like and up like that. Now we're going to make a little chip. I'm going to carve a little, little give a little right there, a little extra, especially on this side. We'll do both eyes and then we flip it over. Now we can take and finish that chip by. Now just we're rounding out the eye there. You guys can probably see it better 
like it. Here we go. Now I'm gonna go as I'm gonna take and bring it up first. Just a little bit up like that. And then turn it around. This is gonna be a little more difficult because the hood is in the way. Now you're gonna go from the top straight or not at an angle down because what's gonna happen is that uh, the eyeball is, well, let me finish this and I'll show you. If you can see the hood is not in the way where the eyeball comes down at this angle because the, the pupil, it would be about, about here. And people have that tendency of making the center the highest point, but it isn't. The top just below the upper eyelid is the highest point on the eyeball. Same on this side. From the top down. Just a little bit more of this. A little more. Can I flick it? Yeah, it's one of the things is if you start doing uh, uh, like men or women without with men without beards, women, that, and you start uh, making it like this size. I mean, his mouth is a little big. We'll have to fix that. Better to have more. But what happens is that when you start playing with the mouth, there's a point that when you cut, you cut and there's something sticking out, you don't flick that off because there goes half the lip. You have to cut one way and then cut the other way. And it's going to be a little bit like that here. Where is my, where is my, where is. Okay, now those are the eyes themselves. Let me finish up with the, my V tool with the eyelid. Now it is about, And cut it in about so you can get that. I don't know if I should pencil pencil in the other one here. That's all that I should have done here. And there's basically that. It's, you want that V to hit right there. Now I have a smaller V. You know that's the other thing too is sometimes I make it too lazy putting one tool down and picking up another and I've been learning how to do things with just a couple of tools with that. Doing it that way. Take my detail, get up here, and I'm gonna cut about a 10 degree angle from the center, flip it over, again, 10 degree angle from the center and so you got that like a 20 degree V. that out of there, should come up, my favorite word. Same with here, well, I have this way. This way. So you're just trying to take a, you're just trying to create like a shadow. Shadow, okay, so far so good, hold on. And, uh, the, for the bottom, now what I used to do is take it, what I usually do is I take the knife and just do a little bit of scooping, but because we got that hood in the way, let's get my number nine in here. Now you could put in all kinds of uh, age lines. Some people, instead of using the round tool, just use the V tool in there and put some age lines in there. Let's put a couple in there. He is an older, this is an old and then he's, he is, he is a bit old, so I'll just, just put a couple in there. Now for the top, very quickly, got to take my number nine, about whatever millimeter that was, about 10 millimeter. And I'm gonna come in here and get the eyebrow bone, eyebrow bones in for the eyebrow. Backwards like this. And it's kind of more like you come down and up. And bring this down. Take 
Wait, I should take the. Oh, I got too much. What is that? Where'd that come from? That's a regular knife on this because I need more oomph to it. Get that out of there. And then one round is just a little bit. And I want to take, when you look at him, he kind of looks like a, he has a, well, on this side, you took too much, kind of has that angry look. And if you don't want him to have too much of an angry look, just take a little bit right there, just a little. So he's just more like concentrating and he's reading, he's reading his list and checking it twice and wondering why they're all the, the naughty people are naughty. But anyways, then I come back, take just a little bit off this way. A little bit off this way. And then, now we got the hair uh, here in the way. Uh, usually if if I have a Santa and you just got the hood or the, or the hat and there's no hat, on, uh, no, uh, um, here underneath, there'll be a lot of this cleaning up like what I'm doing here. And there'll be even more of it. And uh, like I said, that's too much hair. I can, I'll come back later in the hair, but I'm trying to think what more, I mean, we're past the hour that I can do. Well, one of the things, uh, we were I was trying to get this thing, like I said, I'll spend more time on this later. Now, it's, it's getting there, but what I want to talk about, before, I mean, if the time does get a, away from me here, is I want to talk a little bit about the back. Uh, the thing I did wrong with this guy is that um, it can turn out to be a little square. And... And so I did try to get a rounder, bring that bring this back. So I make sure that if we don't get it, at least you know that this is going to be more rounder in the back. Well, the other thing too, um, uh, Blake, are we are we still pressed for time here, or are we still good? Or no, you're good. It's uh, it's ten after four, so you got a little time. Okay. What I want to do, as far as the two details, uh, one is well, I'm, I'll just draw this in. Um, what you could do, uh, like I did here, this is uh, putting in the the coat is more a matter of drawing in and using your V-tool and, and bringing this up. But what I did, what I was thinking here that could be different is you could draw a little line here and that's a hood. So it's a hood and cape. Here's a different, different difference, the hood and cape. So you can have the, the, the hood a different color than, than the, the base. You could do that too. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure before I get to the back here is we want this rounded because you know what, that's square. Because I see a lot of people with their the square bodies and stuff, so so I'm just going to really just enough to make an emphasis on how you round that, so you put in whatever you want to put in. So a little rounded. I mean, there's still a lot more, a lot more fixing to do. But it's getting there. So to get that center line back in there. And it depends on what you want. You want an open coat a little bit. You, we can have it that where the hood is, is where it begins to open. Oh, and then you can have it imperfect, like I said, and then come down this way. That's what I tried to do is a little too much on one side and not enough on the other kind of a thing. That adds a little more as a realism. And I'm thinking it depends on how, I don't know if there's, I think the belt would only be a little bit. I think it just, uh, the belt just barely makes it in here. I think it does. 
you put a belt or something else or suspenders or whatever you want. And uh, you can either have it as a plain coat and uh, take your, your chisel and just kind of bring it down and bring the, bring the uh, belt up a little bit. And I don't know how wide you want this, if you want this. And uh, like I said, we just take the uh, V tool. I'll just get this kind of started. You bring this up, and like you, like I said before, you want to keep the the uh, fin of the chisel up when it comes to the uh, to the trim there. See what was it? On? What did I do that? On this side here. How did I do that? Oh, it was right here. Well, that's the center line. It's about ready to cut into the center line. Eh. And it's really interesting once you get your oops, green, green. Any other questions? Any other questions while I'm doing this? Like I said, I'm just getting this started. You can always take the V and or take the, the knife and cut down. Some. Hey, Russ, do you uh, draw out your own patterns or do you um, use other people's patterns or what do you usually do? Oh, no, actually, I don't. I try not to use other people's patterns. Um, um, what I use, two things that I use. Uh, uh, matter of fact, Lynn uh, is, uh, comes up with some really interesting designs. And it almost kind of feels like uh, um, covering, out, covering out her uh, sort of rough outs kind of a thing. And she kind of roughs it. And I, but she comes up with a lot of interesting design. I mean, she just takes a, just a stick of wood, just a block of wood. Nobody's pattern. Just take a pencil. And, uh, but the, another thing I do is when I get into uh, really get into sophisticated, there is a, uh, there's software out there called daz3d.com. If anybody's ever heard of it, matter of fact, uh, if you get to that, it is two major things about that program is number one, uh, when you when you uh, get into the, the front and side back views, it's true two dimensional thing. That's I like why you can make a lot of uh, um, patterns out of it. And of course, number two is it's totally free. Except the thing is, is that you, they got other things that uh, they give you a, a couple of characters and a couple of pieces of wardrobe and a hair or hair and, and and maybe a pose or two and that's that's it and that might be enough if that's all you just want to get into you know taking a figure put it on the screen and, and move them around and and uh that might be enough but if you want to get into like oh you want to get into the cowboy you can purchase their cowboy outfit to purchase their santa outfit and that's what I do, and I and I move it around and get all kinds of uh, uh, ideas that way. Uh, but I used to draw a long time ago, many years ago. But I just don't draw much. I use uh, I use that now. And uh, what I do is well, sometimes I get the idea. You go on the internet and you see, uh, like for example, I've got the uh, the, the cowboy. The modern cowboy. Um, I wanted to get into that instead of the, you know, the old funny cowboys and they're drunk and all that other kind of stuff. On some modern cowboy, and there's this one older gentleman cowboy. And oh my God, he looked. I really, I wish I looked like him in, in that age. Rough, tumbled kind of guy. And so I had him as an idea, and then I just uh, made a pattern uh, with my dad's from there, and and generally that's about it. Uh, that. Now, what I want to do while I was carving this is to demonstrate how I put the, the uh, uh, holly in there. Um, just if you want to build the sprig of holly, uh, the thing that I kind of goofed up here is the holly is a little smaller. Uh, the reason why I discovered that is a couple of years ago, I had some holly, I bought some holly, and I decided to carve some pieces of wood that look like the holly. And if I were to compare, the holly is about the size of the your thumb or my thumb, kind of. If I put the thumb up to the nose, so the holly should actually be about this size. Yeah, from 
should be from about here to about here, whatever that is. So that got to be a little small. So I kind of found that out later. So I'm gonna put a little, make it a little bigger. So I start with, usually I kind of have a, a funny triangle or what's the opposite of a triangle? This way, like this, or maybe like this. I think I'll make that there, and that's a lot longer. Oh, my knife, can you can see those little, I got sharp with my knife. Okay, so, what's that? So what I do is I start with the holly and I make it just this little V this way, this little V this way. And then I make one, I want to say one kind of one bump or one valley and then bring it here. Or actually, oh, sorry about that. It, I went two of them. Sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. And it come about the center. I thought that felt kind of odd when I did that. That's because everybody's looking. Just kidding. Okay, and then up. And it's a general holly. Like the holly that I have, uh, oh, where'd he go? I mean, it's he that's sort of imperfect, but I thought, what the heck, you know, just uh, if you want to make it in. well, if you try to draw it in and it doesn't come out right, well, then you can just say, well, it's the holly is not a perf not perfect. Yeah. Now you can also wood burn, but I like that extra three dimensionality of it to bring it up a lot more. And it is, this is kind of a tedious, uh, a tedious thing. I'll, I'll probably have just enough time to do, whoops, I forgot to put this in. Enough time to do maybe one. And after I, I carve it, um, then you put the, that's if we run out of time, make sure you put this, uh, take a little V tool and put that little, stem or whatever you call it, the ridge or veins. veins. Okay, I think I'm pretty pretty good with that. So let's just at least one. So again, with the V tool, the uh, blade of, of at the holly, it's gonna be up one. Now what I do is go in. Now, if you're good at uh, this is getting a little bigger, the other one, you have to do a, a two cuts for each one. Actually, it's not coming out as well. Let's see if I can do that see, it's, since it's bigger. Can I do that? Can I? Oh, I think I can. When it's when it's smaller like this, it, that was all, that's almost impossible to cut in and, and scoop. I think I can get away with this. Well, for sure, I can get away with that. Straight up that way. Well, let's see if I can still do it without running it. Yeah, I think I still do it. Good. All right. So either in one scoop or two scoops, depending on how small it is. And like I said, it is uh, it is a little tedious. Now I got to do. You have to get this one done. You got two more to do. And then I take my knife. I'm just going to draw a little bit more because I want to bring it out just like. And if you can, careful, I'm going to break that tip is to cut as much underneath as you can to bring that out. Now, another thing you could do too, is if you wanna take in some of your little scrap wood and, and cut little pieces and then glue it on, I think that would look kind of interesting. Like I said, a nice three-dimensional aspect. Let's cut it on there. Trying to watch the green. Back up here, let's see. That's what I'm doing. I want to be careful I don't scoop too much and lose a second. Holly. That's kind of hard to hold with your fingers like this. And see, I like bringing that up and it comes up. And uh, I, I'd probably dig a little little deeper, I guess for time, but uh, maybe take one more at it. But what I wanna do is then I wanna do this scoop right here, scoop here, scoop here, 
Oops, there we go. It's more, more realistic instead of flat. Went the wrong way on the veins there. Now it's getting a little better. Like I said, if you ever wanted, if you had the time and you get underneath there, that just picks it up. But it has to be a nice shadow there. It has to be um, a much larger. So, so that size is probably the smallest you want to get deep in there. Let's run an experiment. And of course, now it goes this way. Where'd my holly go? Because uh, I got all this, all this, these chips in the same color. And so, so when you get in this way, and then just, I should use my little chisel, sorry. Wrong way. Watch the green. And there we go. And there's a nice holly. Like I said, I it uh, I could do the other three, but uh, it's it's the same as what I just did. And then what I do is you paint it. Uh, paint, of course, you paint it green. And then I put uh, unless you want to get in there because there's those little red berries that are in there. Uh, what I do is I just simply paint it on there. Uh, or fresh right out of the bottle uh, paint so it has a little bit of depth to it. Uh, or unless you wanna get in there with, and I'm not gonna do it, is get a, a small round tool and, and cut it like you're cutting little buttons on a shirt. Now, I mean, uh, we're getting to the, to the end here. Actually, other than, like I said, uh, come back in here and do just maybe a little bit of this. Some depth. And it's the same thing. I'll just do one side here. What I did with the beard, what I tried to do with the holly. After, let's get quite a bit out of here first. Out of focus there. There we go. Just like I just got this, even I got this camera oh, four months ago. I'm still trying to learn it. It's supposed to be uh, automatic, but okay, I'll just do one side. And if you can get in there, and you just like to bring that out. And it really adds to that. That was I was talking with um, Isaac last week with his pumpkins, and he got into those nice sharp, I like those sharp, and it, and it, and it gives that that shade. Actually, I can see the shadow on this angle, but I can't see. I can't see the shadow as much because of the way the camera and the light is. Okay. I mean, other than cleaning this up, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I'll round this a little bit. And then here, I'll, I'll just I'll talk just a little bit is that just, you wanna just clean this up, this area here uh, and this area. And you wanna, if you're gonna paint this, uh, but you leave this a uh, just natural wood and you could put some nice dents in it like I did there. You can either put some, so it looks like a, a knife got in there or you can have it smooth as you want. That's, I mean, that's the only thing else I got left to do here. I don't know if you want to watch me cut that. Hey, Russ, we're, uh, we're pushing on time here, so I'm okay, going to- Okay, all right, because uh, actually to tell you the truth, I'm um, shaping the hair. Other than that, we are, this is pretty good to, to end here. Okay, I was gonna go ahead and open up the floor for any other questions we may have from anybody. Either I was clear as mud or... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and stop you now, Russ, and, uh, and thank you for yep. uh, taking time to come on and share with us and demonstrate. Um, 
definitely a lot of good tips there. And uh, one of the things I wanted to say is that we'll share all the links and tips and things on the posts that we do on Facebook and on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. Um, so if you all want to uh, go out and grab those, uh, take a look at his site. Again, it's uh, scottcarvings.com. And uh, you're welcome to contact him if you have any questions about his books or anything else that he has available. Again, Russ, we appreciate your time today and uh, thanks for sharing with us. Uh, we will ask if you would either post pictures of the finished piece or, or maybe uh, yeah. go out and make a YouTube video of finishing that up and posting it so that everybody can see what happens when you finish it. Okay. Yeah. I do have, uh, also have some free patterns and I also sell, not only do I sell my, uh, my spiral books, but I also sell eBooks. Uh, the eBooks are mostly um, the pattern books. I do have the step by step, depending if it's like the, the Santa books, I have like a step by step on how to do the eyes and ears, and the rest is, is patterns. And I also have a Halloween book out there uh, how to do uh, the female face because there's some witches in there. So I got step by step on the female face uh, on there, and also the greening pumpkin. Uh, and then I do, uh, like I said, um, if you sign up uh, to my email, you get a free uh, pattern book. And um, and then I email because there's a lot of other patterns that I've been giving out lately uh, to my email people. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of other stuff. <laughs> but uh, Russ, well, uh, great, great demonstration, really good demonstration. Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed doing this. It, uh, it, it's kind of kind of hard to do it at a different angle. I mean, if I was carving, I'd be right here carving. But you know, so it's it's. it's other than that, it's it's fun doing, and that's why I like doing the videos. And uh, so that's the first. Russell, I really enjoyed your carving. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, I got uh, uh, you can see my finished carvings. I've got an Etsy site. It's uh, etsy.com, and I believe it's uh, Russell Scott or Scott Carvings. Scott Carvings, and then uh, that's that's where I sell my my finished carvings. And then I also have, oh my goodness, I also have, uh, um, what else? I also have uh, Pinterest, uh, Pinterest uh, forward slash, uh, I think that's also Scott Carvings there. So, so thanks again, uh, Russell, yes. for uh, for everything that you've done for us today. Uh, right quick, before we sign off here, we'll have to stop the recording soon. I wanted to run through the list of people that we have available coming up so you can kind of plan on that. Uh, we got Chris Hammock that's uh, with the CCA that's going to be coming on with us next week. Uh, Chris will be talking about his carving journey and talking a little bit about the CCA. Uh, Jared Wood will be coming on on November the 7th. Jared's going to do a demonstration. Uh, we have Mr. Dave Stetson who's on with us today that'll be coming on on November 14th. He's also agreed to do a demonstration. And we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Wood Carving Academy uh, website that'll be available with uh, lessons and tips and stuff on there. Uh, Kevin Applegate will be joining us on November the 21st. Uh, we have Mr. Jim Feather who's on with us today that's going to be doing another demonstration for us on November the 28th. So we look forward to that. Uh, Larry Green's going to come on again on December the 5th. Larry did a very, the very first meeting that we had in this group. Uh, Larry's going to come on and do a carbon demonstration on doing Christmas trees, caricature of Christmas trees. Uh, and then on December the 12th, uh, another CCA member, Mr. Ryan Olson, will be on with us uh, to talk about his carving journey. So uh, we have quite the lineup coming up uh, to run us right up into Christmas. Uh, we'll continue to contact car carvers and see about getting other demonstrations lined up uh, and get ready for 2021. I'm sure everybody's ready to move on to the next year. So uh, that's uh, kind of what we have coming up. We appreciate everybody joining in with us today. And uh, once again, we'll meet next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, where we will have Mr. Chris Hammock that'll be on Halloween. It'll be interesting to hear what he has to tell us on Halloween. So uh, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you all next week.